It's been seven months since the apparent death of one Peter Parker in the Ultimate Spider-Man comics. And as you guys may remember, I put out a pretty strong video hating on Miles Morales before the first issue was ever published. Then after the first issue, I did do a review on that issue and I criticized it quite a bit. Um, I do know that I, did, I made some errors in that issue. And um, I corrected them in the comments and so on. So it's been seven months since the death of Peter Parker. We have seven issues of Ultimate Spider-Man. And like I said before, when I was hating on Miles Morales and I said this whole Mar Miles Morales thing was a bad idea, um, I was going to cancel my subscription of Ultimate Spider-Man because I like the writer Brian Michael Bendis. Um, I like the art, the artist on the book, and I wanted to give them a fair chance. You know, fair chance. If anybody could make this series work, Brian Michael Bendis can do it. So it's been seven months, seven issues. What do I think of the character so far? Like I, uh, I still have the subscription, and I have to tell you, I'm not really enjoying the series. I'm, I really, I'm not. Um. There, there are some stories in here I do like. I thought the first two issues was god awful. The, the first, the first two issues was god awful. Um, there was a point, and I actually got on the phone and I talked to my buddy Joel, my uh, former podcast member, my you know ITR partner, and um, my staff partner. And I, after I read issue four, I was like, you know what? I, I can't hate Miles Morales no more. And he's like, why? Because he hates Miles Morales so much. And um, I was like, Brian Michael Bendis had me loving this character. By issue four, at the end of issue four, I was about in tears. I, I, I loved that character so much. And it had a lot to do with why he's become a Spider-Man. Why he feels he has to be Spider-Man. And... With the ultimate Spider-Man, Peter Parker, Peter Parker became Spider-Man because he had the power to stop the thief that killed Uncle Ben. Okay, just the same thing as in the canon, Amazing Spider-Man books, you know. He had the power, with great power comes great responsibility. Well, Miles Morales had the power months before Peter died. And according to issue four, Miles was in the crowd when Peter was fighting the Goblin and the rest of the Sinister Six in front of his house right before the death of Peter and he had the power and he didn't help him so and during her funeral Miles attended the funeral and Miles asked Gwen why did he do what he did and Gwen said he he felt bad because he had the power to help his uncle you know he could have stopped the thief he felt responsible for his uncle's death and he chose this path and he died doing what he believed in and those words rang into Miles and I was like, you know what, if I would have done something for Peter, I had the power, Peter would have been alive. You know, so by the end of that book, I was down in tears. I was like, okay, you know, I, I, this character, Brian Michael Bendis has done it. He has made this character lovable for me. I, I love this character. I want to see what happens with this character. The problem is, ever since that issue, the writing has been horrible. The writing has been, like the last issue, issue 7, he fights... Omega Red, and the the issue was almost like a rehash of Peter Fett and Omega Red. Um, I mean, really, the the whole right now the, the main story behind these books is his uncle. His uncle's a bad guy. His uncle just shot the tanker. Um, you know, and he's you know the story behind him and how that's connect. That's what the main focus is on. But all these subplots is just so not good. I mean, in the next issue. We have him facing off against the Scorpion. And right away, if you're a fan of the Ultimate Comics, you know the Scorpion was already introduced in the original Ultimate Spider-Man, in which he was a clone of Peter Parker. Not this time. They changed it. I'm kind of curious to see how issue 8 is going to work. But already, it doesn't look appealing. So, I came to the conclusion of this. Whatever 
you know, they introduce old elements into the Ultimate Spider-Man book, it makes it good. I think the problem with this new Ultimate Spider-Man is there's too much missing. What made, you know, I mean, first, I love the issue four, but let's look at issue four. Issue four had Gwen Stacy, Mary Jane, and Aunt May in it. All the rest of the issues didn't. And they're really lacking that co-star power. I mean, all you have is Miles Morales, his friend Genki, his dad, his uncle, and his mom. And that's all you're getting for supporting cast in this comic. And it's really killing the mojo of this comic. Um, I'm going to continue with my subscription until it gets really bearable, you know, unbearable. I have to cancel it just to try to prove a point to Marvel. But um, a lot of people I've read in comment boxes that people have gave this, you know, series a chance and they're not liking it and they want Peter to come back. And, um, you know, after issue four, I was really gun ho on this series and I'm really disliking it from, from issue four on because issue four has been the only good issue. Um, I think the issue after that when they introduced Spider Woman or Spider Girl, which was Peter's clone, that issue was good. But you notice all the good issues it has characters from the um, just built my comics, but they have characters from Peter's past come in, and that's what makes the stories interesting. But all the ones that just has these new characters aren't good, and I think a lot of people complain the same thing about a oh, brand new day with the same concept. But once you introduce Norman and all that stuff, brand new day kind of got a lot better. Um, but this is, I mean. Very consistently bad. I mean, I was hoping for like up, down, up, down, but really it's been crap, awesome, thought it was the plateau, I thought that was the best, you know, all right, we're gun home now. And then it goes like this to the next issue five, and then issue six and seven just levels right back out to crap. So, um, I don't want anybody to think that I didn't give this comic its fair share. You know, I gave, I gave it the benefit of the doubt, I stayed with it. Regardless how I felt about them killing off Peter, I stayed with the comic, and um, that's really what how I feel about it. I think if they want to keep this series going, they need to introduce Mary Jane, and Gwen, and um, Aunt May again somehow. They need to at least introduce Mary Jane and Gwen back into these into Miles' life. They need to interact somehow on a steady basis. I mean, you have no JJ, you have no Aunt May. I mean, you just don't have anything that we're used to with Spider-Man. I don't care if you're trying to redefine this character for a new generation or not. You you gotta throw a bone to these new readers because right now I'm seeing a shitload of these books left on the shelf. And I'm not used to seeing that with Ultimate Spider-Man. Usually when Ultimate Spider-Man comes out, I grab my subscription, I look over at the shelf next to me, and there's like maybe one left, two left. Now I'm seeing a stack of them left behind. So I don't think this is really sound as good as uh, the new chief editor wanted. You know, but that's what happens when you try to kill off a steady character who's making you money to try to introduce something because you want to do uh, some kind of racial statement or whatever. You're not Martin Luther King, okay? Um, you may have a dream, but your dream is slowly fading and you need to wake up. So, um, that's what I feel about the new Ultimate Spider-Man. I, I did like it. At one point I thought they were really doing something great, but they haven't really followed it up. Um, it hasn't been a whole year. It's been a little over a year. I'm going to give it to issue 12. That would be a whole year. Um, and then I will do another video and see how it worked out since then. So um, that's really all for the all new um, Ultimate Spider Man. <laughs>